welcome to this video where I'm going to be reviewing the Zaya activewear while we play with Shiny and some of my other horses and really put these clothes to the test. So these clothes, they're the activewear, they've got the moisture wicking fabric, they're breathable, all those sorts of good things that you expect from high quality activewear. But what makes them a little bit different is they have four-way stretch fabric, so they actually add some compression which is good for circulation but also it makes a little bit of a slimming effect so you guys normally see me in my regular riding pants so you let me know if you see a difference and how i look in these compression pants they've got a little bit of a snugness feel to them i really like how comfortable how i'm moving around in them so so far i'm a fan i'm liking how comfortable everything is uh, the top, I know it doesn't really work with the bra I'm wearing, but this was the top that I got. So anyways, we're, we're working with that. Uh, but we're going to see how they hold up to the fur, how they hold up to riding. I love that they've got the pockets, which is very handy for putting my cell phone in or things like that. I actually got rid of all of my riding pants that don't have pockets in them because I just found it so annoying not to be able to slip my phone in or have my car keys when I'm going somewhere. And I actually choose to wear my riding pants that have pockets or uh, leggings with pockets when I'm going around pretty much anywhere because it's just so much more handy. So I'm a fan so far. I'm gonna put on my treat pouch and we're gonna play with Shiny. We're trying to get her ready for her level five video. So if all goes well in this practice, we're gonna film that today too. But uh, grab my treat pouch here. This is the level one student treat pouch that's got the cookie compartment. It's got a zipper at the back for your credit cards or whatever and then a zipper at the front for your lip chap or whatever else you want to stick in there. Uh, that's what I put in mine. But uh, we're going to get ready to go here with Shiny and uh, test out this active wear, this Zaya active wear and uh, we'll see how it goes because if I like it then I'll be uh, putting up a link for a shop for where you guys can get some of this stuff for yourselves and it's pretty reasonably priced. These pants are 87 bucks which um, you guys know for high quality active wear that's a pretty good pretty good price point and that's Canadian dollars which for Americans basically makes it free with your dollar exchange so anyways let's play with shiny and have some fun all right so let's show you some fun stuff with shiny as we try out this Zaya actor active wear so first up we're gonna do some Spanish walk here and this is only her second day doing Spanish walk. I introduced the idea of lifting her legs yesterday when I was working with her. So I'm really happy with how quickly she's picked this up. So she's doing a lot of stomping and pawing, uh, but I'm not discouraging any of that because she's bringing her legs up and forward. And I wanna reward the really nice big steps that are really lifting of her leg. And then I'm gonna to try to time the reward such that she does a nice big lift and try to get that down so she's not doing as much pawing and instead just doing the lifts. So this is really great because some horses, they really don't pick it up this easily. So you can see I'm trying to time now stepping forward and rewarding her so that I try to cut out that time of doing the stomping or the pawing and instead make it more just the lift and place the foot back down. Some horses, they take a while to learn to lift their leg up nice and high like that. Or when you start to walk them forward, they start to lose their lift a little bit. So the fact that she's kind of starting to get it where she steps and lifts and steps and lifts, I'm pretty happy. And she's already starting to get both legs as she goes along. Occasionally she'll forget one, but like, look at that. That was really good. That was three steps in a row. So I'm really happy with that. So then here we're going to go out on the circle and take a look at another one of the tasks which is to start to be able to do halt transitions on the circle. So in Harmony Horsemanship we spend a lot of time drawing our horses to us and that's how we start things because we want the horse to come to us when we're kind of complete of tasks. It really helps with liberty and then pretty early on we want to start to introduce the idea of stopping on the circle. So this is in level five, introducing the trot, halt, trot, and using our body language, signaling to the horse that they're not supposed to come all the way into us and instead stay straight on that circle. So that's a little bit of a look going to the left. Now I'm gonna show you to the right. 
And then as we build up the level of difficulty, Shani will eventually be able to do this even further away from me. But to begin with, it helps to be relatively close to her to start with. So that way when she comes in like that, I can politely uh, block her at the side of the face there and just kind of say, hey, remember, stay, stay out away from me stay facing forward on the circle. So she didn't earn a cookie for that one because she turned to come into me. This one she did wait and then I try to go up to her to give her the cookie before she thinks about drawing into me on the circle. So I try to have a little bit of a, a proactive approach there. So I'm gonna send her out again, give that another little try there as we go out on the circle and ask her to go into the trot and really just focusing on getting those transitions at this point. So we always have to remember that we don't ask for everything all at once and it wouldn't be realistic for me to expect her to have really beautiful bend on the circle and have that working really well with the trot halt trot transition. So I just focus on the one thing at a time and then that helps set it up for success. So now we're going to try the backwards circle. So this is something brand new to Shiny that she did uh, yesterday again for the first time. Yesterday was a big day where I introduced a lot of things to her for the first time. And she did really, really well. So you can see she gets a little bit confused sometimes here, but overall is doing pretty well understanding what I'm asking her to do. And she's got to bring that hip a little bit more a little bit sooner, but for her second time ever doing that I'm really happy with that that's a pretty good circle so we're going to do a little change of direction here and do the other way it's so important that we work both sides of the horse for all of the different tasks otherwise they can become very one-sided there's a couple things that I'll only cue from one side of the horse just to help make it a little bit easier so for example, with Alicia, I only get her to do her capriole with me on her left side, just so that way we don't uh, get her extra confused. And I don't want her being super flighty with that cue because it can be potentially a dangerous cue. So I only cue one particular way with her because I don't want her offering that up in other positions. For example, if I, if I were to be standing behind her and she did that, that could be pretty bad. So for certain things, I think it's helpful, but for most of the time, I'm going to cue things from both sides for my horse so that way they can uh, learn to understand things from both sides. It's just much better, much easier let you build to more tasks. <laughs> it's funny there at the end she was like, can I do Spanish walk? And I'm like, nope. So this footage here I sped up a lot because I wanted to show you just how hard this was for Shiny to learn, uh, which is putting her back feet on the pedestal and then doing the 180 pivot. So she would pivot pretty decently. I could get uh, most of the way and then she'd kind of fall over and fall off the side. And it was hard to be able to get the 180 in both directions and not have her fall off the pedestal. So like here she does so good and then right at the end swings her hip and falls off of the side there. And just by speeding this footage up, it's actually sped up, I think, eight times the speed. Just gives you an idea of just how patient I had to be with her to try to get this figured out. I try to ask her to come back up and on. And I'm just using my hands. There. I'm not using a whip or anything like that. I'm trying to be very slow and patient with her. And I want to keep her really thinking about her feet. I don't want her to get worked up because I want her to understand what I'm asking her to do and I want her to be thinking her way through these tasks. That's really important that she keeps thinking and asking those questions for what I want her to do. So she finally gets it well enough and I'm like, all right, let's try the bounces. So that was her first time ever over the bounces and she does that really, really well. This is my uh, Pivo filming me, by the way. If you guys haven't heard of what a Pivo is, it can track you and film you without having to wear a tracker or anything like that. And I have a Pivo review. So if you actually search for the Pivo review video, you can check it out. So this is me trying to teach Shiny a downward dog, which if you know downward dog from a yoga pose, the horse one is very similar. And in true Shiny fashion, she's like, you know what? I'm just going to lay down. <laughs> so funny, Shiny. She is hilarious. That's basically what she did with learning how to bow. And I'm like, no, like we need to learn how to do downward dog. Not everything can be a down cue. So I'm just standing there. I'm not going to punish her or 
make her feel bad for laying down because laying down is still a difficult task that I want her to be able to do. But I'm not giving her a cookie for going down because I didn't ask her to do that. So I'm going to give her a little dust off and kind of get that a little bit better. And then I'm going to give that another go here. So we're going to give this another little try here. And essentially I'm trying to draw her back and keep her feet planted. And that was much better there. That was much closer to the downward dog that I'm looking for. So I wanted to reward her before she basically fell on her face and did another lay down. Uh, so we left it there, which is pretty good. So here I'm asking her to back up by a tail, which is something that we learned a little bit the day before. But as you can see, she's kind of like, what? What did, what did we learn yesterday? I don't, I don't know what that is. So I'm going to speed this up again eight times the speed for getting her to back up by a tail just to show you how much it took of trying to teach her to back up and kind of get those two signals going together. So I'm using the feel on the tail, but I'm also using my verbal cue back and then I'm trying to reinforce that cue either by pressing on her chest or by using the lead rope, uh, trying to get her through her head that when I lift her tail and I say the word, she's supposed to back up as well. So we do a fair bit of trying to just teach her to respond to that verbal cue. And then I'm trying to reinforce when I lift the tail. And when she goes crooked, I don't get mad at her. I don't try to make it a big deal. I just kind of go with her and show her that the answer is actually to go backwards. So this was a little bit time consuming to get her to figure this out. But she starts to get it and then she kind of gets confused and then she starts to get it and she actually had it pretty good there but she got her foot caught on her rope which was kind of not ideal and then i had to backtrack a little bit and start to reward her for the little baby steps again because she got her foot caught on the rope so that i guess i should have just unclipped her rope I mean, my horses don't care if they step on the rope and things like that, but in that scenario, it blocked her from going backwards and confused her. So that meant that I have to reinforce and say, yep, this is what I actually want you to do is I want you to back up by a tail. And she was always trying to turn and look at me. And so sometimes it can take patience. And by speeding up this footage, I wanted to give you guys a grasp of just how much repetition and patience it took before we get these magical steps that we're about to get here where she actually gets it and backs up and she backs up pretty straight too. So I'm really happy with that. And it took quite a while before we got it figured out, but with patience and understanding and focusing on that communication, we get that happening. So now I am riding, I'm doing some bridalless warm up with Alicia. So we're going bridalless around and I wanted to show you this footage sped up just so you could get an idea of just how much I rode in this active wear before I decided to get off. And I'll slow it down in a second to show you. We're going to work on some bridalist lead changes in a minute here, as well as some bridalist uh, bounces and working on the timing. But I just wanted to show you I did a fair bit of riding, fair bit of warm up. Because then at the very end of the video, we're going to take a look at the seams on the pants to kind of see if they hold up to the wear of going around. So here is some bridalist work, starting to work on some bridalist lead changes. You can see she got her front legs, but not her back legs. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, if you watch when the horse canters, see how right now the right legs extend further than the left legs. So that's called leading. Those are the lead. So the right legs are leading the left legs. So a flying lead change is when you're cantering and you stay in that canter rhythm and then the horse switches their lead. So instead of leading with the right legs, they would lead with the left legs. So watch, right, when's it going to happen? There, see how the left legs switched and she did what's called a clean flying lead change because she swapped both her front legs and her back legs at the same time while they're in the air to get that flying lead change. So she went from leading with the right legs to leading with the left legs. So this is something that I'm teaching her to get her flying lead changes and to do them bridalist, which means she really has to listen to my body and my cues to get them. And sometimes what happens is she gets a little bit sloppy, a little bit lazy, and she'll just do her front legs and not the back legs. So I'm working on getting both the front and the back making sure she understands that I want them both. 
So here going off into my canner transition. So you can see she's also doing a lot better with those walk canner transitions. We're gonna come around on the left lead, watch right there. She swapped and did her front legs, but see how the back legs are still leading with the left leg. See how the left leg, the back leg is still going forward. See that there, you can see it. The left back leg is still going forward. Here I'm gonna do the little jumps to sort her out and then we'll pick up that canner again. Now see how both the front right legs and the back right leg are matching, they're both leading. So when you have the horse doing opposites like that, where you have the front legs doing one thing and the back legs doing another for canter, it's called a cross canter. So she was cross cantering, uh, not super desirable because it's not super balanced. And sometimes an easy way to fix it is to just have your horse go up over a pole or a little jump because it just gives them that little bit of extra time in the air. So that way they sort themselves out. So we're going to try this again, see if we can get those flying lead changes happening. So, so far she's giving me a clean one from the right to the left, but I haven't got one from the left to the right yet out here. So we're going to try to get that happening. It gives me a nice little goal. You can see our new little jump fillers. See the fire and the waves that we made? Those were something new that my staff made this week. I was pretty excited about that. So we're going to come around here. We're going to catch the little jumps. And you can see she's leading with the right leg. See how both the back legs and the right legs, the front. And then we switched. You can see she got the front, but see how the back is cross cantering. So then I do the little jump and she still cross canters, which is like really bizarre. It's like, how can you possibly do that? And then she does finally get her bum. Did you see it swap a few strides back there? I did the little jump there with her. And then we're going to come around, see how she did her front legs again, but see how the back legs didn't switch and watch the jump. And she's still cross cantering, which is just really, really weird that she jumped and still cross cantered. I didn't feel it right away, so I didn't pick up the canner right away. So we're going to go into the canner again and see how the right legs are leading both the front and the back legs. The right ones are coming forward. We're going to come across the ring here, make the change, see how the front leg swapped. So now I just got to get her bum. So we're going to go over the jump and she did give me the hind leg. See how now the left legs are leading. We're, we're going to try again. I got the front legs. I need her to give me the back legs. And instead of giving her the jump, I let her do a little simple change there, meaning she got to trot a stride. So I'm keeping her going now. There she finally gave me a clean flying lead change. So she's going to earn a cookie. But I was just keeping her going in the canner to say, okay, if you don't start putting in a little bit more effort with these lead changes, you're going to keep working. We're going to keep going until you get it. And that adds a little bit of motivation because sometimes just the cookie at the end is not enough. Sometimes you have to kind of be like, all right, you're going to work a little bit harder if we don't get this to happen here. So we're going to give this another little go in a second. So Notice how that was a right to the left. So that's the second time we've gotten a clean change from the right to the left, but we still need to get one from the left to the right in order for me to feel like we've got a win going on here. And we all know that if you remember back from Alicia's first videos, that the right lead used to be really challenging for her and it still is more challenging than the left lead, but it is something that she can do. So let's try again. We got the front end. Can we get the bum? Boom, got it. See how that, it was late, meaning that she didn't do it at exactly the same time, but it was only a stride off there. So that was pretty good there. So we're gonna give her a cookie for that. And we'll wrap up the bridalist riding for today. And then we're just gonna take a look at the Zaya Active Wear after doing a ride, what the seams look like on the legs. So sometimes if you use yoga pants or athletic pants, they can get really rubbed and worn. But these seams are really good quality and I'm not seeing any issues. So let me know what you guys think of this clothing and thanks for watching.